Yo, welcome back to the channel, everybody. It is Manticore. You're in the Manticore's Tavern, and I'm here with some more Master Duel replays for you guys. And I am going to continue showing you guys how great and awesome heroes are, however they be. You know, there are Omni heroes, there are straight-up vision heroes, elemental heroes, destiny heroes, extra heroes, evil heroes, you name it. Heroes are just a fantastic archetype in the game. Archetype, archetype, however, I don't know. I've heard people pronounce it both ways, but either way, Heroes are awesome, and I'm going to show you guys how amazing they are, featuring some replays versus some Sword Souls. So we're going to go ahead and hop right into it, guys, and I'm going to show you guys two duels today. And again, guys, I told you guys that heroes are a fantastic archetype, archetype. I'm going to call them archetypes, and you guys are going to be okay with that. But uh, they are sort of on the rise with Power of the Elements right around the corner in the TCG. We do expect them to have some really good new support um they have been topping tcg uh regionals and ycs's and stuff like that so although they are not necessarily tier one or tier two they are a very good rogue deck and honestly i do foresee them being more of a tier two type of deck right now rather than like tier three or rogue any anyways um so we're going on we're doing our normal hero combo type of stuff we're getting our ferris we're getting our increase and then we're going to send a shadow mist we're going to add the liquid soldier and now we have three monsters in the field we're going to use vion's effect to banish a hero card to get our polymerization which is oh so important with heroes and here we're going to go ahead and go into our wonder driver wonder driver is our resource gatherer i would say or resource recycler because it gives us our polymerization back we're going to activate the polymerization get us our sunrise sunrise is a very very good card to use when you are using it in conjunction with wonder driver because you can go into a chain link one chain link two and chain link three now you do want to resolve your wonder driver or your uh, sunrise first but as you saw i already have the miracle fusion in my hand you would typically use Sunrise as the Chain Link 3 so that it resolves first and you add your Miracle Fusion. That way, when you use Liquid Soldier's effect and it resolves, you don't accidentally draw into the Miracle Fusion, thus rendering your Sunrise ineffective. So, we already have the Miracle Fusion, it's okay, and then Wonder Driver is going to resolve to give us our Polymerization back on the field and it is set. Now we're going to go into our Miracle Fusion, we're going to go straight into our Absolute Zero. Absolute Zero is a mandatory card effect when it is, act when it is sent to the graveyard or banish or something like that to where you can destroy all monsters and opponents, your opponent controls. So if they do want to clear your board, they have to find some way to try to clear this first without having too many monsters on their side of the field in order to use their resources. They don't want to get rid of it when they have four or five monsters that they're intending to go into some sort of combo or they don't want to get rid of it whenever they have a boss monster on the field. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my Destiny Heroes to go into my Dominance here and Dominance has a fantastic effect in which I can use it to stack my opponent's deck. Like stacking your opponent's deck is nutty in this format. It's too good of a card. And then here we're just gonna go into our Cross Crusader effect. We're gonna special summon our decider to use its effect to add a hero from our graveyard to our hand during the end phase. And we're gonna go straight into getting our Dark Angel. And as I've said in previous videos, guys, we are putting all of our monsters in face down, or not face down, but defense position with the exception of the Cross Crusader because it's a Link monster and it can't be in defense position, but we're putting them all in defense position because we are going to summon the Dark Angel to our opponent's side of the field, which in essence is a an Imperial Order. Your opponent basically cannot activate spell cards and we don't want them to. So now we're gonna go ahead and set the mass change. Now we do have the DPE here just for reassurance, so that way whenever they do try to attack our Cross Crusader with the Dark Angel to crash with it and get it off the field with the Suicide, um, we have the DPE that we can use to get rid of it, and then we have all monsters in defense position, and they can't suicide with their Dark Angel. And he, as you guys saw, he tried doing something with the spell card. It got negated because of Dark Angel. People don't read cards. And then we're just going to special summon the, the, the Dark Law and defense position, and then we're going to go ahead and just sit here. Like, you know, there's not much more he can do. You know, the, the emergence is attempting to resolve in the graveyard, but it's getting negated because Dark Angel is still on the field. We, he's just going off and getting monsters in the field. We're going to go ahead and get rid of our Absolute Zero at this point and nuke his board. I, at this at that point, I felt that it was pretty safe because I feel like he's kind of used up a lot of his resources. As you can see, he didn't get rid of all of his resources, but I did not want him to use his, uh, his token and his... Uh, what's it freaking called? The, uh, other, the Sword Soul he summoned to uh, Taie. Uh, to go into a she shower or something like that. I wanted to prevent that as much as possible. And here he's just trying to recycle. He just got a link one on the field. 
Uh, there's not much more he can do at this point. I think I do kind of stop him here right at, as soon as he gets into the Shaman of the Tenyi. Um, and he goes into battle phase. He's just going to try to crash. I'm going to go ahead and activate Sunrise's effect because Sunrise has the effect. It's, it's a great card because you add the Miracle Fusion. But then on top of that, when your opponent attacks a monster other than himself, it basically... You can target a monster on the field and destroy it. And here we have game. Yeah, I'm not going to overextend. He has no cards in his hand. He has no cards on the field. I could have overextended if I wanted to, but I'm just going to go ahead and attack for game, put everything in attack mode. The Dark Law is a very good card against your opponent whenever they are playing uh, Sword Souls because they don't get the ability to activate the effects of their Tenyis in the graveyard because they are already banished. When they go to the graveyard, you can activate their effects in the graveyard in order to banish them for cost and then do some stuff like add a, a worm monster or send a monster back for, uh, to the hand or something like that. And it's just, Dark Law hurts a lot of decks. And honestly, you can just summon a, a Dark Law and it shuts your opponent down for the most part. But we're going to go ahead and uh, normal summon our Vion. We're going to send the Shadow Mist immediately to get the Liquid Soldier. We don't have the Stratos, so we're not going to go ahead and special summon and do that immediately. But we are going to go ahead and have our Ferris Resolve. We're going to get our increase in the field, and then we're going to send our Vion. Again, I want everything in defense position, hence why I got rid of my Vion first. To go ahead and try to put things in defense position and get myself prepared for the Dark Angel play that I intend to try to make. However, that is quite a few lines of play down the road or from, you know, during your turn, you do want to make sure that you are doing things properly. You don't want to be putting things in defense position in attack mode or whatever and trying to go through a line of play that you will not be able to fulfill, albeit a hand trap that your opponent stops you with or you just don't get the resources you need or anything like that. And that kind of, you know, it, it can kind of hurt you. I could have sent the Malicious here off of the draw from my Liquid Soldier. However, I do intend to go ahead and have it by using polymerization in my hand to go into my DPE or go into some other link monsters and stuff like that that will allow me to be able to get to the graveyard anyways. Now we're gonna go ahead and activate polymerization. Like I said, I'm gonna have it. I'm gonna go into my DPE, my DPE here at this point. Now I have the malicious in the graveyard so I can activate its effect to special and I'll get one on the field. And at this point, I can use them both to link three into my Cross Crusader. Now, Cross Crusader is the card that I typically use to get my Dark Angel to my side of the field. And as you guys can see, I don't really have the Destiny Heroes in the graveyard. You need to have three Destiny Heroes in your graveyard before you can activate Dark Angel's effect to send it to the graveyard or to discard. And I only have one Dark Angel and my Malicious. Now, I do run other Destiny Heroes in this deck. However, I don't have the, it hasn't worked out in my favor. You know, I didn't get the cards in my hand to be able to have three in the graveyard immediately. You know, essentially when I have Fusion Destiny, it's an immediate three in the graveyard. But don't forget, DPE is also a Destiny Hero card. And you can go ahead and destroy itself and the Link Monster that is going to be used for your opponent to be able to crash into it. And then get rid of, and then uh, get rid of their Dark Angel on their side of the field. And that DPE would be my third uh, Destiny Hero Monster in the Graveyard. Now I'm going to go ahead and special summon it to my side of the field in defense position. I do have a Max C and I have an uh, Ash Blossom on my field that my opponent, uh, to be able to stop my opponent basically, you know, at this point, um, I'm not activating Max C. I don't know why I didn't activate Max C, honestly. I think that maybe just because I relied on the Dark Angel being on my opponent's side of the field too much. And don't forget, I also do have the Absolute Zero. Here I go, activate the Max C. I must have not been paying attention or something like that. He's going to go ahead and cross out Designator, but guess what's still on the field? Dark Angel is still on the field. It's going to get negated. So my Max C is going to resolve. Look, guys, Dark Angel is a nutty card. If you if you get it to your opponent's side of the field and they don't have like a Link Freebo or Forbidden Droplets, it's almost like a done deal. At this point, he can go ahead and get rid of my Absolute Zero, but... It's just gonna, it's gonna blow up his board. And look again, guys. People don't read cards. It's freaking fantastic. I love this shit. So it's just gonna get negated. He banished ten cards for no reason. And then he's gonna go ahead and do some shit. I'm gonna go ahead and tribute my my absolute zero using my increase, which is a thing you guys can do. Um, so I took damage right from his long one, and because I took damage, I activated my. Uh, increase effect in graveyard to set to put it on my field as a face up continuous trap and then during the main phase it states so you can activate during your opponent's turn you can tribute a hero monster and summon it and then it's just going to blow up his board and then i think he did something to protect his uh his uh sovereign here his Chang ying uh oh yeah that's what it was he could banish one card from his graveyard instead and so now i'm gonna go ahead and get my dpe to the field 
Now I'm going to activate my Fusion Destiny. Guess what I'm going into? I'm going into my Dominance at this point. Fusion, you know, Fusion Destiny is a good card. It would be nice to have more than one target in your extra deck to be able to use it. Now we're just going off doing some things, getting our Denier on the field. He does have a bunch of cards banished, so my attack points are extremely low. But I go ahead and stack his, his deck. I go into my Cross Crusader. Cross Crusader is going to go ahead and come back. I'm going to use it to get to my Diamond Dude, activate Diamond Dude's effect. Not a normal spell card, so it's kind of a whiff, but that's okay. You never you never know. And then here we just go into our Stratos. Now we're just going to go ahead and normal summon a Stratos. Stratos' effect is going to activate, and guess what we get? Stratos can search Plasma, guys, right? So let's look at this. I'm just going to go ahead and tribute all three. That's fine. DPE is okay. Being gone. Activated his effect. I'm going to take his Sovereign. That card is a is a it's a busted card. Chinging is a hard card to get over, and the only out I could think of that I have in my entire deck to get rid of it while its effect is active and not negated is plasma. So I took his plasma, and at that point he kind of just goes ahead and uh, you know scoops. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the deck list here. Um, I do have a bunch of other decks that I do want to show you guys, but uh, you know we have Flunderies in the making, we have Sword Soul in the making, uh, we have PKs back. Guys, I went ahead and got my PKs back because I missed them so much. But with without further ado, let's go ahead and go through the deck list. I've shown you guys this specific deck list before and in other videos, but I'm showing it to you guys again because I love you guys so much. Um, so again, Destiny Heroes is what I want to call this deck. It's a Destiny Hero deck more so than an Omni deck. It does have variations of them. So we have Elemental Heroes and Vision Heroes and Extra Heroes and stuff like that. So you can call it Omni Heroes, Regular Heroes, but... We run so many Destiny Heroes, it's kind of hard not to call it that. Anyways, uh, so we're running the three Dark Angel, the MVP of the deck. We have the three Maxis, I guess another MVP of the deck. We have Increase, which kind of was also an MVP uh, in those replays I showed you because I got rid of my own Absolute Zero to Nuka's board. We have Ash Blossoms. I don't even think I use an Ash Blossom at all, um, but I did have some in my hand. Uh, but we'll go ahead and call that an MVP too. We do have Denier because that can give us our Malicious and our Malicious can give us our Cross Crusader and other Destiny heroes. So Denier is also an MVP. The first one that's not an MVP, we got Diamond Dude because he whipped, but that's okay. No worries. We got the Stratos because we can search Stratos using uh, extra hero Cross Crusader's effect. And then we just search him, normal summon him, activate his effect. So he's an MVP too. We got Vion. Vion's an MVP. Shadow Mint. Every card in this deck is an MVP, so I'm going to stop calling them all MVPs and just continue on with the deck list. Uh, we do have Decider, which allows us to add a hero from our graveyard to our hand during the end phase. Uh, we have Liquid Soldier, which is our Pot of Greed. We have the two Ferris, two Malicious, basically a Denier is a third Malicious. That, that's how I like to work it. You know, It's basically a package deal. Uh, we have the one Plasma, which won us our last duel to take that Cheng Ying off our opponent's side of the field. We do have the Poly. One Rota, because everything on the entire deck is basically a warrior. Uh, we have the Miracle Fusion, which is almost 100% going to give us our absolute zeros compared to anything else. We have the two Emergency Calls, which adds an Elemental Hero, typically Stratos. Uh, we have the three Destiny Draws, because again, we run so many Destiny Heroes. You know, the chances of seeing a Destiny Hero in our hand to get us, you know, more resources is likely. So we have that here to just discard the Destiny Hero, draw two cards, basically a Pot of Greed. Uh, we have three a hero lives because that's a busted card yeah the cost is quite steep but it's too good to be able to special summon sh uh, shadow mist and then get a mask change and then go straight into dark law uh, or go straight into stratos add a hero and then vision hero uh ferris is in your hand and you can go off for your combos there we do have fusion destiny because what i like to do is send the three uh destiny heroes from deck to grave to go into dominance and at that point you have the Destiny Heroes that kind of recycle themselves to get onto the board, and then you use those monsters to use just regular polymerization to go into your uh, your DPE. And the thing is that Fusion Destiny has a restriction. It says that you're locked into Dark Heroes, but the majority of my extra deck is Dark Heroes, so I can activate that immediately and not really be worried. And then we have the Mass Changes because Dark Law is a great card, and the two uh, Called by the Graves. Continuing on, we do have the two Dark Laws because sometimes we can have two and sometimes they get rid of one. And when that one is gone, it sucks. So having two in the field is nice. We do have the Blast here because sometimes our opponent will do stuff to our Stratos. They'll imperm the Stratos or affect the Stratos and we want the Stratos to resolve. So if we have the Mass Change in our hand, we distribute it and then we get the Mass Hero Blast on the field and then your Stratos will still resolve. Um, the, only thing that, the only time it won't resolve is whenever like they ash blossom it or something like that when it said when they stay 
when they activate something you know it's so like when a card or effect is activated that adds a card from deck to hand but uh like with a effect veiler and imperm they have to target the card first and then if it's no longer on the field it'll resolve uh then we do we do have the single dangerous i don't really go into this but it is a good card to be able to get another destiny here to the graveyard if you need it uh like if you don't have the the denier or the yeah the denier or another or the malicious new graveyard if you do happen to go into it you can and then from there go on with your rec uh resources in the graveyard we do have the sunrise we have the absolute zero we have escarita because sometimes you run out of uh materials for certain fusions and this is the only thing we got you know we have like a shadow mist or a stratos in the field with one of our dark monsters uh it's 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 there just in case uh this is more beneficial when we're running super poly against dark decks uh so that is there and i will show you guys some new deck profiles with those as well uh, we do have the dystopia uh this is a free pop we have the destiny hero destroyer phoenix enforcer which is obviously dpe everybody knows what that card is we have the dominance which is my primary fusion destiny target to summon and then from there we go off on combos to get more destiny heroes in the field that we will use polymerization for we do have the wonder driver because this gives us our polymerization back for free the two cross crusaders because it can search any hero and that is just fantastic. We have the Anaconda that I never go into because we always have heroes that we go into first before needing this to do anything. And then we have the Dread Decimator just to give us some extra attack for a game. But there you have it, guys. My Destiny Hero deck versus Sword Souls. Sword Souls sucks. Heroes rule. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to join the Pop One Podcast Hangout Discord server. A link to the server is in the description down below. Make sure you join. We are getting heavy on Pokemon Go. We're getting heavy on Pokemon TCG. We've been heavy on Yu-Gi-Oh. We talk about anime and all kinds of cool shit. Just make sure you come join it. Cool people. And that's all I got for you guys. So see you guys in the next video. Peace.